My presentation today will briefly cover the central office alarms. The concept of the central office alarm has been used since, of course, prior to 1900, uh, when the very first switchboards and dial switching equipment uh, was uh, produced. They had to have ways of detecting failed conditions. And over the years, this uh, technology had been substantially upgraded and widely used in many different aspects. There's many, many different types of alarms in central offices, depending on what type of circuit or equipment it is. I will primarily be discussing a Western Electric step-by-step -step office. However, Automatic Electric, Stromberg, Carlson, and Western Electric use the same concept with maybe an occasional variation for whatever application they had. The same concept was used on PBX systems that were located on customer premises. Um, so also toll carrier systems, telephone switchboards, both uh, toll boards and PBX boards. So I'll briefly cover my alarm system that was in my 355A office. This document here, I'm showing at this point what is referred to as an FA, which is a fuse alarm. This is very common in, like I said, all types of switching systems. This concept did not change until the digital world. The number one ESS, number two, and number three ESS use the same alarm uh, indicating. The number five ESS was much different. I've never worked on a number four. I can only assume that it was probably the same as the 1A and so forth because it would have been the same time period. So with the FA here, what we have is I have a fuse bus bar and then there's um, four fuses on it. So the bus bar has 50 volts on it all of the time. And then if a fuse blows, then it will connect to a bus that has the fuse alarm lamp with the resistor across the lamp. Then it's connected to a low winded uh, relay, probably 50 to ohms or less, depending on the circuit. The reason for the resistor across the lamp is whenever a fuse blows, you want to light the light to tell you what fuse panel the fuse is blowing in. And you also want the alarm to uh, be indicated even if the bulb is burned out. So this is a, a very common circuit. It was used in 24 volt, 48 volt, 110, 130 uh, volt systems, depending on what it was connected to. Uh, you would have a bank of relays, and I will show you a few of them that's mounted in my office uh, that this would connect to. And depending on if it was a staffed office or a unstaffed office, back in the day they called it manned or unmanned, uh, the alarm may be silenced locally, but it would appear on a cordboard switchboard or it would operate some relays in what was called a, uh, an alarm panel basically for the switch. And you had a number checking terminal that you could call and depending on the condition of the office, it would either ring, give you a fast busy, slow busy or uh, nothing and that gave you the indication of what was going on in the CO. In this case here, FA, which again stands for fuse alarm, would have a red cap on it. So that would be 
a major or a critical type of an alarm. In step-by-step -step offices, you would have a RLS, which stands for release, which would be uh, for line finders, selectors, or connectors. Instead of being a red jeweled cap, it would be green to indicate a release condition. Generally on a release alarm, they would be connected to a delay relay that would not operate the lamp until a predetermined amount of time, generally two minutes or three minutes. That point you'd have a stuck switch and then you would have um, an audible condition most likely or a change of state in the alarm checking. There was also a nuisance alarm, which was generally disabled shortly after it was wired up and tested, called PS. That was a permanent signal. It would have a white jewel on it. All three of these alarms operated the same exact way from a circuit point of view. A lamp with a resistor across the lamp and a relay. Uh, then the relay would have uh, a contact closure that would then, of course, start other things happening. They had in the larger central offices what was referred to as aisle pilot lamps, which means you would have one fuse alarm, release alarm, and permanent signal alarm relay for each individual aisle. And then at the end of the aisle, towards the top of the rack, would be a series of lamps, white, red, yellow, and green, to let you know that there was a problem within that aisle or lineup of equipment. As I stated before, the permanent signal was pretty much disabled from what I've seen and been around. The PS uh, lamps were all burned out or missing. So generally you read for a fuse alarm was always a tested good working circuit. The release alarm was a good working circuit. And then if you had a minor uh, power alarm or some auxiliary piece of equipment that needed attention but not necessarily critical, you would have a yellow indicator. Uh, and I do have that on some of my power stuff. A critical alarm would be red, um, and then the PS and release would be a time delay alarm. I have the PS relay here showing the schematic of it. I'll show the physical relay in a moment. And this is the release alarm relay. These alarm relays are located on the left end of the shelves in the office. This would be the uh, selector or connector shelves. The line groups also had alarm indications, but they worked slightly different. difficult to do. I'm trying to hold the camera and uh, go off hook. The PS relay is now energized. And we have a lamp up on the top that shows that there is a off normal condition on this shelf. If I dial a digit and it cuts in to the bank, then the PS light will release and clear the alarm. Each shelf of the selectors, that is, has two release alarms. One uh, for the first five switches and another one for the next five switches. So one through five and then six through 10. You'll notice the relay will operate momentarily. And that's only during the time that the switch is released. However, if I hold up the switch manually, the relay would stay uh, energized. 
if I leave this here long enough, it'll bring in an alarm in the background. I will not do that uh, at this moment. We're looking at four relay plates that has a total of five alarm circuits so I can have five different aisles of uh, alarms. And in this office, I do actually have five aisles connected up. These are B-type relays and they're difficult to see operate. And these are up above my head. So I'll show a different B relay operating, but not an alarm relay. But it's the same exact style. I'll manually operate this relay. I will operate a release magnet on one of my step switches and you'll see the green light light up. The yellow lamp is not at this point wired up and I do not have the permanent signal lamp because those are difficult to find due to the fact that when they were burned out or removed they never replace them and there's just not any spares around. And trying to find 60 volt light bulbs is just impossible. I'm going to put in a blowing fuse. These are the fuses. The bottom lower fuse is a good fuse, and the top fuse is a fuse that has been blown. These are what's referred to as a alarm indicating fuse. These particular fuses are a type 70, which was a later generation. Uh, and then the fuses today, in 2023, whatever fuse panels have uh, alarm indicating are referred to as GMT fuses. And the red tip indicates that this is a half amp fuse. If the tip was white, that would be a one and a third. If it was uh, green, it would be a five amp. Blue would be a three amp and so forth. And there's about 10 to 12 different amperages of these fuses. Here is the fuse holder that the fuse is inserted into. I have a 35 type fuse, which is referred to as a grasshopper fuse. The upper fuse is blowing, which means it's no good. And then the lower fuse is uh, a good usable fuse. These are one and one third amp because they're white. And this was very common in the stuff from the, the late 20s up to the mid 60s and then of course the 70 type uh, was made after that. A fuse panel in a Stromberg XY machine. The Western electric fuse boards and fuse panels were similar to this. Miscellaneous fuses in my miscellaneous fuse distribution section of a relay rack. Back of the 70 type fuse panel. If you're liking the video, please subscribe, give it a thumbs up and share. Also, if you wish to help out uh, offset my monthly cost, I do have a Patreon link and a join feature on YouTube. Fuse distribution and alarm relays on the end of a connector shelf. Looking down two of the five aisles of step equipment, every shelf has its own fuse panel for distribution of the switches on that shelf, their own release alarm and permanent signal alarm if it is a selector shelf. Here's the resistors that's across the lamps. These are 500 ohm resistors. I believe they're five watt wire wound resistors. They do get quite warm if they've been, uh, if we've had a condition for a long period of time. 
I have a vertical mount and a horizontal mount fuse. The vertical mount is for my uh, 105 lineup and the horizontal mount is for my rectifier and power distribution. The back of the power distribution. There is a fuse alarm bus on that and then the fuse blocks have the indicating fuse in it, which is basically two fuses in parallel with one another a half amp and then the main load fuse, which can be five amp to 30, 40, 50 amps. Every single power circuit has its own individual fuse. So in the aisle that is on the right side, I have trunks, various miscellaneous control circuits, coin trunks, uh, timing circuits and so forth and each circuit that has a dedicated power source to it will have a fuse or maybe more than one depending on what its function is that was the reason for the massive uh, distribution of fuses keep in mind this is a very tiny central office if you was to be in a real large office you may have multiple 11 and a half foot tall relay racks of just fuse distribution this is a 600 line little office and uh, the fuse panel that i put in which is above the resistance lamps and then on up about 90 percent of those fuses are actually wired front of the main power distribution for the central office GMT type fuses. Here is some of my 24 volt distribution for the 3CL switchboard and toll equipment. A semi-modern fuse panel that you would find in central offices today. This is a GMT panel and they make fuses up to 10 amps per fuse. That is alarm indicating. The large bundle of cable you see is all DC or ringing generator plus tones that goes throughout the office. One of the schematics for the uh, shelf um, relays and alarm. Thank you for watching. If you're interested in more detailed content of how things work, please leave a comment below and I may consider making additional videos with details of how things actually work. Have a great day.